Well, a funny thing happened between now and the previous video. I shut down vCenter for the evening, turned off the rack server, powered it all back on, then tried to lock on back onto vCenter, and it wasn't responding. And I realized, oh no, I totally forgot to tell the ESXi host to automatically start that VM, the vCenter server appliance, every time the physical server is powered on. So in this video, I'd like to correct that problem by telling ESXi 6, our new physical server, that we wanted to go ahead and auto start the vCenter server appliance. So to do this, we're going to go to the ESXi host client. I simply opened up a browser to the ESXi host here at 192.168.1.106. There's its IP address right there associated with its logical VM kernel zero adapter. And to configure the auto start feature, we're going to click here on manage on the left hand column here in the ESXi host client. And then with the system tab selected, we'll click right here on auto start and we'll go ahead and edit the settings and say, yes, I want to allow auto start. And for the stop action, instead of power off, I want to go ahead and do a shutdown. And for the start delay, if we're starting multiple systems, which in this case we aren't, but if we were, I'm going to set a 30 second delay between the starts. And then also for shutdown, I'm going to go ahead and set a 30 second stop delay. And for wait for heartbeat, I'll go ahead and click on yes right there. So we'll go ahead and click on save. So now that the ESXi host itself is willing to do auto start for a VM, let's go down to virtual machines here on the left. And there's our vCenter server appliance right there. So we'll right click on our vCenter. And from the drop down here in the ESXi host client for that vCenter VM, we'll click right here on auto start. And from the sub menu, we'll click on enable. And boom, it's now configured to auto start. So now the next time that we power down vCenter and power down this server, when we power this server up, it'll start the vCenter for us automatically. And just as a sanity check, let's also log into the vCenter server. And it is at the IP address of .30. So I've connected over with a browser to 192.168.1.30. We're going to log in as administrator to our single sign-on domain, which is vSphere.physical. I've supplied the password and we'll click login. So up here in the top left, this is the vSphere client. There's our data center called physical. There's our cluster called physical cluster. And there's the ESXi host that we're using. That's ESXi 6. And there's the virtual machine, the vCenter server appliance right there. And if we go to the top here and go to monitor and go to all issues under issues and alarms, looks like we have a vCenter server health alarm. If we click on triggered alarms, we can expand that. And that looks okay. So I'll go ahead and select that, reset to green. And also initially we had some messages about not having anywhere to log files because we're booting off of a flash disk. But after the reboot, all those messages seem to have gone away. That could be because we now have a data store and that data store is right here called ESXi 6 data store. And if we wanted to check on that data store, we can go to files. There's a folder for the VMs involved with the vSphere cluster services. In addition to the files for the vCenter server appliance, which are in this folder right here, we also have a folder called VMK dump. So unless that error pops back up with vCenter, we really don't need to worry about doing anything else to eradicate that error message. So as a quick test, just to verify that this VM, our vCenter server appliance, will automatically boot up. We could also double check it right here in the vSphere client by selecting our ESXi host, clicking on configure, and then going down under virtual machines. And here we have the VM startup shutdown. And sure enough, automatic order. There's the vCenter server appliance. And I also suggest that we test this. So I'm going to log out of the vSphere client. And then I'm going to log into the management console, which is the same IP address, which is 192.168.1.30, and then a colon port 5480. And here we could log on as the same user, or we could also log on as simply root locally. Either one would work. We'll click on login. And then from here, we can click on actions and do a graceful shutdown by clicking on shutdown right here from the dropdown and clicking on yes. And if we go back to the ESXi host client right here, that vCenter server appliance is on its way down. So we'll just give it a moment to complete its power off. Fantastic. It is now powered down. So now with no VMs actively running other than the VMware cluster services, which is okay, we'll click on host. And then I'll go ahead and click on shutdown. So I'm going to let that power all the way down. And when it's done, I'll go ahead and physically power it on. I just want to verify that the vCenter server appliance does automatically and correctly power up and be brought up automatically when the server is brought up. All right. So in the background, I just hit the power button. The fans are giving it a good run for their money and it is powering up. Now, this is the old login screen for the vSphere client. So the vSphere client service is not active and up yet on the actual vCenter server appliance. And as a quick test of that, what we could do is we could go ahead and do a ping to the IP address of 192.168.1.30, press enter. And that's gonna fail because we don't yet have 
our vCenter server appliance up and running. So we also could do a test with a ping over to 106, which is the ESXi host itself. And once it initializes, it should be able to respond to a ping. So I won't even bother trying to log in yet to the vSphere client here because the ESXi host isn't up yet. And then the actual vCenter server appliance also is not up yet. So I'm gonna give that about three or four minutes and then we'll come back here and test again. Also in the background, those fans are quite loud. So in our next video, I'll move this rack server back to my rack so it'll be a little quieter. And I'll also in a subsequent video, I'll walk you through how we can set up a script to automatically tell those fans to calm down. All right, so it's been a few minutes. Let me go ahead and do a ping of the ESXi host. So there's our responses from the ESXi host. So it at least is able to respond and operate on the network. And if the auto start of the vCenter server appliance is correct, the actual ping over to dot 30, which is the IP address we're using for the vCenter server appliance, that should start responding as well once it's ready. So we'll go ahead and do a ping to 192.168.1.30. And as expected, that's not quite ready yet. And the actual vCenter itself, that may take uh, somewhere between five and 10 minutes to be fully ready. So once dot 30, which is our vCenter server appliance, starts responding to pings, it still may be several minutes after that until the vSphere client, the web interface for us, is fully ready. And so now it's responding to a ping. Let's go ahead and attempt a login at the vSphere client. So I'll click here on login. And this message simply implies that the vSphere client is not quite up and running yet. So it doesn't mean there's a persistent problem. It just means it needs a little more time. So I'll give that another few minutes and then we'll try again. And the reason I'm showing you this message is because it happens, especially in a lab environment, quite a bit when we're waiting for the vSphere client to be fully initialized. So again, if you see this message, just give it a few additional minutes and then try again. So on a Windows computer, you can hit F5 for a refresh or in the background, it may do a refresh and give the login prompt or you could do a control shift R for refresh on a Windows computer. And those options also work on Linux and I also know there's similar options available on Macintosh as well. Another option would be to just close your browser window and reopen a browser window and try to reconnect to the address. All right, so it's been a minute. I opened up a new browser tab, reconnected to the IP address dot 30 for the vCenter server appliance. I'm gonna log on as administrator. And the fact that this came up automatically when the server was powered back up is a great, great sign. All right, so let's take inventory. We now have an ESXi host. We called ours ESXi6. We deployed the vCenter server appliance. We also specified to the host that it should automatically power up that VM for the vCenter server appliance every time the server is booted up. And we verified that it works. So our next step is to take this server and I'm gonna physically move it over into my rack. We'll do that in the next video and I'll walk you through it then.